All right. Go ahead. Questions. I've got answers. Jeez, oh, I have so many, actually. All right, go for it. You can start. Well, yeah, I just want to say the Bella, she's really looking good since, you know, she gave birth to five kids. So that's really what? amazing. My wife? The... Yeah. <laughs> she's really good looking. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> Second, um, why why did you start programming? Because I know like a couple of years ago you started learning 3D and you really mastered it really quick. And I didn't why, master it, what, not at all. I got good at it. Well, you say that. Yeah, you're good at it. Yeah, but there's but, but you, but there. you learn really fast. I mean, it's amazing. And why programming now? Uh, I've always wanted to learn how to make games, and the the largest hurdle was programming. I learned all the art stuff. I learned everything around game dev except for the actual game development part. Mm. Right? Because... How about... Yeah. Because... Uh, How about... Oh, what the? Stop interrupting me. Sorry. <laughs> you first. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, and so, I... Um, I wanted to learn uh i wanted to learn how to to make games i've always wanted to uh, in fact when i first started my uh, career i went to art school looking to make video games so i started as a programmer you understand and mm -hmm. then i saw art and i was like oh that's way cooler and so then i started learning art and then uh i'm really happy i did but then i was like you know eventually i was like yeah i should start learning some programming and so that's when I started learning Unreal and you know anyways it's kind of where I'm at today and um, you know Unreal is great but there's always something about blueprints that I loved like I feel like there needs to be more of this node based programming but you know it's just so challenging to uh to learn code it seems like right and i thought no base programming would be just the solution you just need someone to just kind of invent it and just make it easier and now i'm starting to realize that that no the programming languages as they are, are actually pretty they're they're pretty good in fact um javascript is is super good and um uh, and I'm like, I, I should have just learned these a long time ago. You know, there's a C Sharp, I think is a new one. There's some other web languages like jQuery, uh, which is basically just, um, it's like someone made a function that makes a function do something, <clears throat> right? It's like making something um, that will control other aspects of your code. So, like, if we were to look at coding again, right? Let's let's make a function. Let's go ahead and make a function, right? So let's make a function that does one thing. Let's say one thing. This function does one thing, dude. Okay. And okay. and that one thing it does is it it, it on the console dot log, it will say something. It will say. It will say something something okay oh yeah i have to use strict oh, i'm still saying one thing console log something console was used before it was defined whatever dude i put you strict here homie you need to calm your role um so then, let's go ahead and fire this thing. And then you'll see that, what did it, what did it fail to load? Oh, it just failed to load all together because this is not really a website. Okay, that's why. So there should be nothing, right? Okay, cool. And, and in the console log, there should be nothing. It's fine. But if we were to, let's say, I think you can just type in one thing. 
See, and it says something, right? Nice. And <clears throat> what you can do in here is basically you can say, no, if someone writes the word something in here or nothing in here, whatever the, those are, whatever these values are, you can then have it call in here onto the console. Console, oops. See, now I'm starting to go into territory that I'm not entirely um, educated on. You go plus nothing, right? And so basically what you can do is you can have functions that have these parameters that you can put something inside those parameters, right? And then, and then what I can do is I can create a variable that equals, that's called something, and then I can put you know, one and then variable called nothing and have it be two. So then according to this, something and nothing, uh, it should be one plus two, and it should give me that value. If I did, the, if this, if I did this correctly, I think I actually did it wrong. But, but what people have done is they, they've basically created something like this, right? And then they, um, they uh, one thing. Yeah, so that's the, the function, but it's actually one thing. Oh, you know what? I can do this, two and three, and then that should give me five. That's right. That's what I wanted to do. So there's no need to have these variables. That's what it was. Okay. okay. Do you see what I did? So yeah. something and nothing, it says, okay, what is, what is something and what is nothing, right? So then I can do the same thing. I can go one thing, um, Serbia. <laughs> you're, you're starting to lie of my is country. Wonderful. Oh, right. Oh, I have to close it out. So now if I hit enter, it should put, say Serbia is wonderful. And it should make it so that Serbia is is like one word. Yeah, see that? Serbia. Because mm -hmm. I didn't put a space there. So then if I go here and I go plus a space that B, and then plus nothing. Now, now if I do this, I have to refresh this actually. One thing, one thong. Serbia. Do, do you think you can get to all the way to that black magic programming part you need yeah. for gaming? I, yeah. I already, I already, I'm already there. That's what I'm trying to say. Is awesome. Really. It's just a time thing. It just takes time to do this stuff. All right, I didn't. I didn't do this correctly. Yeah, so my code somewhere is missing, but not to get too much into code. It's not important. I'm trying to teach a lesson here, right? And so I'm using the code because it's just like so clear to me as a as a good teaching tool. Basically, what I'm trying to get at. <clears throat> is when what I've discovered about learning is just to learn that, like to learn the reasons why people do things, right? And so when I first got into Unreal and even in programming in general, um, like th there was something about like blueprints is great and you can make a lot of beautiful things using blueprints. And blueprints, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, is basically like coding but just with images, like nodes, which is really, really clever um, but one thing that I was starting to kind of um, run into was this idea that I just was always I always felt like I wasn't entirely in control now it's not true you can do so many things in Unreal Blueprint right? they, they, they really made an amazing tool but there's something about like I just couldn't I was not in that much control okay and the, the most equivalent thing that I can put that to art was that I would use a lot of reference before that would be on the outside. And if that artist couldn't do a thing or they didn't have an example in their own artwork, then I was never able to potentially do it either. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because I was only and always referring to that one artist. So if they were to to just basically fall off the face of the earth and never do any kind of painting again, then I potentially will be stuck. 
knowing nothing more than what they knew. And I always, it always sat kind of sat uh, strangely in my gut. You know, I didn't like that idea that I was kind of like um, had like a rigid ability. And so I spent a lot of times uh, instead focusing on why they painted the way that they did, like how. What are the clues? And this is what I've come to the conclusion to the many conclusions I've told you guys is that it really isn't complicated. I've been looking for the complication in it, but there is no complication. It's that these people just focused in on the things that they like to do, and they just did it so much that they got proficient at it, right? They learned from many different people. They learned as much as they could from all of the different people. They were laser focused. That is what unifies them all is that they're just super fucking focused, right? And so then I applied the same to my own life, and that's how I learned so quickly. And so then when people when people ask me, like, um, how do I decide what I want to do for a living, or how do I decide what to do, you know, like there's so many different things and stuff like that, I say to you, what is it that you really want to do? You should ask that question. And then you should answer it. And then whatever you answer it with, stick with it. Okay? And stick with it until you've accomplished whatever you were aiming to do. And then you can decide to deviate. So I have a good friend. Him and I have the same philosophy, right? We're really close. We've known each other since we were 10. And we have the same philosophy mostly because probably we grew up together and, you know, we had the same principles. <laughs> And so he started to do the same thing. He, 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 he fell into this trap of like, I don't know what to do. And uh, I remember giving him advice. I was like, why don't you just do what you want to do? And he's like, what? And <clears throat> so he started doing that, right? And he started accomplishing a lot of success in his life because ever since he did that. But then he came to the, some crossroads, just like many of us do. And he was like, you know, I, I don't want to do this all the time. Though. I want to do, do this. And this thing that he was saying was writing. He wanted to be more of a writer. Okay, so I said, okay, then you should start writing. And he said, yes, I am. I'm going to be doing that. And so he's basically written over 200 st stories. Uh, he's written like a whole, he's writing a novel. He's almost finished writing a whole like 20 or 30,000 word novel, right? It's crazy. You know, uh, he's made a game entirely in VR. Um, he's made lots of different little small projects, right? And um, the point I'm making is all he did was for about, especially with the novels and the writing stuff, all he did for about a year was every lunch he would write an hour worth of writing, every lunch. Uh, and then every once in a while he would go home and write some more, right? But most of the time he spent writing at his lunch hour. You know? Mm hmm and that's how he was able to do so much. And then when he was making his game, he would spend every morning, he'd spend about 10, like an hour or even just 10, 15 minutes every day on his little game. You know? <clears throat> and he would just do that. And then that's how he made the game. And then one of his coworkers was like baffled. They're like, how did you like write this whole book? And how did you like make a whole game? Like I've been working on this game for like years. You know, I can never finish a game. Like, how did you finish it? And he's like, I just finished it. I just made sure I did it. I said, every day, uh, step by step, and worked on it. And then the guy's like, that's it? He's like, you didn't have any special sauce or anything? He's like, no. Nah. He's like, if you just put time and effort into something, eventually it'll get done. <clears throat> and him and I, man, I love having conversations with them. Like, whenever we, we catch up with one another and talk to one another, because we're both like so much on the same wavelength, we always like complain uh, about how all these other people complain. <laughs> you know, we're always just like, man, like the other day I was talking with somebody and they're just like so, so stuck in their ways, man. Uh, I love talking with them too because he works with people more often. I, I don't work with people as often, so I don't have these types of conversations anymore. But when I used to work with people, uh, like all the time, I used to to make fun of them, not in like a a mean way, you know, I would just always be like, yeah, there's this guy, here's a good example, there's a guy once I worked with at Blizzard, uh, I got in a real argument actually with him about it, 
um, where he kept on complaining that he wished he could do pixel art. Right? He's like, man, like this Blizzard stuff is fun or whatever, but like, I really love pixel art. And I wish I could just do it, but I just can't. And I said, why can't you do pixel art? He's like, well, I can't. I just don't have time. And I was like, why don't you have time? You know, very much like what I did with you guys, right? Like, ask questions, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just kept on asking him questions, and he just was like, you don't get it, dude. Like, he's like, you don't get it, man. Like, I have no time. I have, like, two kids. I got a wife. I got a family to take care of. And I have, like, uh, this job. And I think he didn't realize, but at the time, I had four kids. Right? And obviously, I have a full-time job, too. I was working with him, you know? And so, like, he he didn't know that. I can tell he didn't, because he wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have used that as an excuse. And, uh, and I was like, okay, so wait a minute. So you're telling me you don't have time because of your children and your family? And he was like, yeah, man, it's, like, really hard to take care of family. I was like, I said, oh, no, I know, man. I have four kids. <laughs> and he was just like, wait, what? You have four kids? I was like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, so I understand. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's, it's really hard. It's very challenging. Don't get me wrong. I get it. But why is it their fault that you can't do pixel art? Like, why are you already putting resentment on these, these children that are doing nothing wrong? You know? And I got them. Got him hard. He can really rebut that. I think the fact that he would normally would have an argument with somebody that was my age, you would just assume that there was nobody. Like, it's very rare would he encounter somebody that had a matched, you know? And I got him. And then the next day he started doing pixel art. But, like, I always talk trash about it, that moment because it's just kind of like, um, if if you believe it, then yes, you're right. Just like I was saying earlier, right? And so... When it comes to, like, learning stuff, like, you say it's black magic. Right? It seems like it. Yeah, it seems like it. You're right. But don't you think that's the same kind of feeling that a programmer has when they see your artwork? Yeah, I think it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. But then you'd say to them, no, nah, it's not black magic at all. I'm like, it's just practice. I just draw a lot. And... Yeah. Yeah, but but for this kind of thing, I think you need more different knowledge. You have to learn from nope. books and such. No. no, I mean, yeah, the same thing with art. Like so that means you've never bought an art book. Well, no, <laughs> but it's somehow it's see, okay. Maybe it's you see, what's again. happening. See what's happening. Yeah, yeah, as I soon see, as you think it's yeah. that, that's when it becomes. That's where the barrier comes from. The barrier isn't the fact that it is that. The barrier is that you think that it is. That's the real barrier. You know? Well, yeah, but I always sucked at math and things like that. That's why I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Do art. So, uh, are you uh, amazing at perspective? Okay, I see where this is going. Yeah, right. Like perspective is <laughs> technically math, right? It's, well, yeah. It involves angles and uh, uh, mathematical precision, right, if you want to be good at it. Yeah, but that's true. But also you kind of, you know, the feeling for perspective, it's somehow when you're doing it every day, it kind of grows. You have better understanding of it. Sure. So let me ask you, how many times do you do uh, algebraic equations? Jesus, I don't remember that. Yeah, probably only in grade school, like the rest of us, right? Yeah, yeah. Versus, let's say, a mathematician who does it every single day. Yeah. Do you start? You understand what I'm getting at? Like, yeah, it's not yeah, that yeah. it's like you got to be born with it. That that whole idea is just out the window. And I'm saying this for everything, almost, ev- almost every single thing. There are obvious some there's, there's some obvious things that we can probably objectively say. If you don't have hands, then we can say arguably and objectively you can't pick up stuff. Okay, I get that. All mm-hmm. right. <laughs> well, at least with your hands you can't. You, no one said anything about your feet. You know. Which there's 
there's an examples of people who uh, have no arms and yet they're amazing painters is the guy who painted the feet. Have you seen that? So see, he, even yeah. having arms is not a prerequisite of being a good artist. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So it's just this, as soon as you believe something, then you're right. So why don't you try to breathe, believe in the extraordinary and be proven wrong versus believing in, um, <clears throat> believing in the or ordinary and being always wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to yeah. most likely be wrong if you believe in just ordinary and simple, like simple minded ideas. Like you, if, if you can't do programming unless you're good at math. Watch, I could prove to you that you can program. Are you on a, are you on a, are you on a Mac or a PC? Uh, PC. Good. Good. Yeah, just before we start, I want to say that, like that guy you talked about, uh, that was kind of blaming his kids. You know, if uh -huh. and if I didn't know you, if we met somewhere and I started to argue with you, that would be a real big mistake. It's, it's like you have, you answer people with questions. Like some sometimes I hate <laughs> that. <laughs> well, because that's how you get answers. You have to ask questions, and you have to ask the right question. <laughs> You know, yeah, if, that's really true. Yeah, if you only ask the most superficial questions, then you're only going to get superficial answers. For instance, uh, it, when people ask, "How do I get better at art?" That's too super. That's just too, too broad, right? Yeah. But if someone asks me, like, "How do I, um, how do I use reference?" I have good answers for that. You know, I don't necessarily ask questions on top of questions with that type of stuff. Because usually that's a, there's a really good and clear answer. And I say use it, you know, uh, by studying it, understanding it, right? really and analyzing it, right? Uh, you can put some of that reference inside your mind or you can put some of that reference outside of your mind. You know, you choose. And I have answers for like some basic art stuff, you know. But I've been teaching for quite a while now and I've discovered that just teaching people how to move pixels around doesn't really give them a lot of value. Like as a, as an artist, you understand me? Like, you yeah. may learn how to paint, but you're 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 just gonna be like every other schmuck who can just go online and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and learn how to paint. You know, what I mean? you're not really mm -hmm. training some real practical skills, like skills that will make you a better artist. Because the tools are going to evolve, they're gonna get better. So if you have this mindset of like, well, you know, I can learn anything, then you won't be the kind of person that ten years from now is like, look at all these youngsters and they're. Their Daz 3Ds and their shitty little new software. You know, back in my day, we used to digitally paint. We used to use Wacom tablets, not these memory readers. You know, these like brain readers that read your brain and then draw something from it. Uh, you gotta learn these. these you gotta learn the real way to draw. Tablet to PC. <laughs> you, can, you can see how that's kind of ludicrous because like that's how it is every generation. Every generation. I always tell people, as soon as you say, back in my day, uh, or when you, not, not so much that, as soon as you say something like, you know, something along the lines of like, you know, it was better back then, or things were so much better, or this was that, that much better, it, you know, in the long run, historically speaking, you're just wrong. Right, mm -hmm. and and if you understand that, then you'll be more prepared to try new tools, new uh, devices. You know, you won't be so kind of uh, complacent with your ideas and ideations. And so, um, and that's well, that kind of mentality let, lets you learn quickly. They they did some scientific research about this stuff, right? Like they said, like, okay, when is what age is it where our minds truly start losing track of um, information and like how 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 old are we till we start to not learn anything new like it's become very challenging so people thought you know at this very specific age it's like really uh like around the 50s and 60s they, they they thought it was kind of an exponential thing too like it was going to be pretty dramatic but the reality is the opposite they um they found that that people actually retain information and new information they can learn new things uh, all the way almost to the point of, to the day they die, right? 
and yes, it goes down. Like, of course, your 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 brain is going to be weaker. You know, you're older, but it's not like dramatic. It's not like you can't learn any. Like like an old man can't learn 3ds Max because this is so much harder for them. That's that's what they're saying is not necessarily true with their research. They discovered what really is the cause of that. What really causes people to learn anything new is actually nothing physio- like physical. It's actually mostly psychological. Meaning that once you believe something to be true, it is harder for you to stop believing that it's true. You understand? Yeah. That's the real barrier. Right? So think, think about what happened right now, right? You were saying, man, black magic. Program is black magic. Math, man, I'm not good at math. See, those, these are, you might not think are real problems, but realize it. Like, the reason why you yourself have not pursued programming is not necessarily because you're bad at math or that, uh, that programming is black magic. Is that you believe that, it's, that you're bad at math and you believe that um, it's black magic. Now, you might be right. You, you are probably really bad at math. I'm sure you are. Okay? Yeah. But, it, but the, the seed that you've planted doesn't necessarily the, – the seed that you plant in your mind isn't saying that you're bad at math um, because of a lack of skill. It's planted somewhere else. It's planted where you're bad at math because this is kind of who you are. And that's what I'm saying is wrong. That's the part that's wrong. It's in the wrong area. It's the wrong way, way of thinking. You're bad at math because of a lack of effort, lack of skill. It's that simple. You, Serbian bastard, can become a math genius if you decided to. I, I, I even took private classes when I was in high school. It was a disaster. Yeah, and I, I, <laughs> and I, I don't doubt that. And, you know, math is one of those things, too, is if you miss a step, then it makes the whole house of cards fall apart. Yeah. Right. It's very linear. Right. Like it, math, that's what I love about math, is that it's it's not very forgiving. It's like you got to know it. If you don't know the fundamentals of it, like the math will reveal itself that you failed. Right. But that's the beauty of it. Unlike something like art, where there's a lot of variables to consider, math there's not that many variables. It's actually very, like you can learn it step by step until you become really a math genius. Right. If you'd like to. You know, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. There's some people that are just like straight up prepared for math. Like their their brains are ready to go to learn it at the best ability. You know, there's advantages, of course. People have advantages, but those advantages isn't, isn't uh, basically what I'm trying to say. Don't make or break whether someone's capable of doing something. Okay, so mm-hmm. let's let's do some programming right now. Actually, I'm not going to pro- pop up some the, the programming tool. We're going to do some pseudocode. Okay. What and I'm, I'm going to send you one link to explain this to me just okay. before we start. So <laughs> if... Is that your kid? <laughs> no, that's me drawing a heart. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so if I want this heart to take damage, right? Okay. Like take some damage. Okay. Every time I press the W key. Okay, I press W, the heart takes damage. Okay. So so what do you think you need to do? Just like what do you think needs to be done? You press W. Press W. Okay. So let's do it. So let's make code that says you've pressed W. So you make some code and you say press W and then what does it do? It just, yeah, we can just say console log. Console log is a way of kind of, it's it, it, it's very, it's just text, right? So it allows yeah. us to kind of see if we made that code work. So all you would do is then say, okay, if W is pressed, then say something. So say something is right here. So there, we've coded that. So then once you realize, okay, now I got W to do something, all you got to do is turn that something into the damage. Right? So then you have to start to say, okay, well, then what does the heart represent? Like, we need the heart to actually have a value. So then we make a, a variable called heart, 
and then heart will have a value of, let's say, 2. Okay? And so then all we got to do is turn this something into heart minus 1. Does that all make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, so if you press W, what happens? What happened? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I just got distracted. Can we go again to this? <laughs> yeah, no problem. So if I press W, based okay. on, there's a lot of words here too. Let me make it simpler so that way you don't get confused. If I press W, what does W do? That should do damage. Yeah, but what does it represent? Well, how are we representing damage? Like, look at this equation. W, pressing W. Okay, it heart, does one. Yeah, minus, yeah one. heart minus. Yeah, okay. You can do that, right? You can think of that. You can figure that out. And once you kind of start to doing this, then you start to realize that's all it is. Like, all <laughs> the whole game. It's just what the difference between different programming is that how clever people are with their code. You know, some people use... Like, like what you're saying, like crazy algebraic equations. And all you got to do is put in a number and then it will go through the machine and make something do the thing, you know, which is cool, right? Um, but Or you can just brute force it, which I do a lot of times, which is just like, if I press W, I want you to take one away from the, the heart value, right? And then I can do something like this, like console log, um, always console log, what the heart value is. So basically, uh, in the console log, it'll always be like two, 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 forever, right? Like if it's auto automatically updating often, right? And so as soon as I press W, it should start saying one, 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 you know. And if I press W again, since there's no breaks, there's nothing to stop this from keep going down and go to zero. And if I press it again, it'll go to negative one, negative two, negative three every time I press it, right? Because there's no other code stopping it from doing that stopping, yeah. yeah see because it's super simple so that's what code ends up becoming right it's becoming like you just basically create really elaborate instructions that accounts for every possible problem you know that sounds boring yeah yeah it, it does until you start making things work and then it's the most well yeah i think i think that's the fun part when, when things start actually working yeah dude it's it's the most rewarding yeah most rewarding feeling dude like it's you, you, it's something that you just don't get from art that is so much more so much rewarding it's crazy how rewarding you're going to be a programmer now <laughs> oh yeah i'm going to learn it i'm going to make games you know, the part that takes the most time, actually, is the art. That takes the longest. Really? Yeah, not, not the coding. The coding is actually not as difficult. Like I just showed you, it's actually not that challenging. You just got to know the language. That's, that's probably the most challenging. I feel like half the time, I don't know what words, like I don't know what tools are available to me, you know? that There, there might be a more, more efficient way of doing what I'm doing, but since I don't know all of the the different code language that's out for the one that I'm using. I feel um, I'm only using what I know versus what I could be using. But I'm not stressed out about that because time will give me information over, you know, I'll learn more as time goes on. I'll have more stuff to work with in the future. Um, you sent me a link. What did you want me to do? To say, and then I'm gonna take on uh, my question. Yeah, I want to uh, ask you the technical way. How did he do that effect behind the, the, the second wheel? This Those man. lights and stuff. Yeah. He probably used a gradient map or some sort of color dodging, and then just used several different layers. So something like this. Whoa, magic. Is it magic or is it knowledge? Uh, okay, maybe a bit of both. Stop saying so everything is magic, magic homie. <laughs> <laughs> if you do everything like magic, then you, you'll, you'll never know, right? Like, So it's a gradient map. 
Not thre okay. Not threshold. I hit threshold. Whoops. But that was actually pretty interesting. I didn't know what threshold was about. Uh, I made a gradient map, and then I'm going to okay. make a black layer underneath. I'm going to clip mask so that the gradient map is living on this layer. And in this layer, I'm going to switch to screen. Okay. Uh, I think this needs to... Why is this... There you go. Yeah, that's that's good. And then what you can do in the gradient map is you can pick like these different gradient maps. So like, oh, I'll pick like this one. And then what you can do is you can put in color, right? And you can have it do whatever you want. Like you can have it go to these different colors. So there it is, right? And then when you start to, whoops, when you start to uh, paint in here, it should do it, but it's not. I wonder what's going on differently. Oh, maybe. Maybe I didn't pick the right gradient map. Let's do gradient map again. Yeah, there you go. Something was off with the last one. So then there you go. Now do this. Now do screen. And then when you go to screen, nothing should happen. There you go. And then we can go pick those colors, that I said, and then I make a layer in between those two, so that way I can control it. I can make one layer that's maybe like this. And then I can make another layer that's like little particles, but it's its own layer, so that way it's like non-destructive, you know? See, it's magic. It's all programming, man. Yeah. Once you start to learn yeah. programming too, it's cool because you start seeing the matrix a little bit. It's pretty this is this was really amazing. I didn't know that's how that's done. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing tools that Photoshop has to, to your availability. You just got to use them. Yeah, but I don't know. I really didn't know how that works, and I didn't I didn't find that on like YouTube and stuff. But there, there's probably way to find that just didn't know what's the name of that how should yeah. you search it here, here's a here's an interesting thought email a guy or gal ask them you'd be shocked yeah. you'd be shocked that they'll answer oh, okay yeah, yeah yeah i didn't i never thought of that <laughs> just actually asking them especially on art station there's messaging now so you can message these people kind of directly so you should yeah, I think, but yeah, I was thinking like, you know, they're, they're, they're busy guys, they shouldn't bother people with, with questions like that. Yeah, you're probably right, but what if you're wrong? Yeah, I should probably try that. Worst <laughs> case scenario, they just don't respond to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was already true when you didn't write to them. Right, so what's the worst that can happen? I mean, let me let me be clear. Don't like be stalkers. Don't like message them every five minutes. You know, uh, yeah. I, had, I had a friend once. Like he he showed me this message chain that he got from a fan of his, and this person went too crazy, man. Um, it it started off as like, hey man, I'm a big fan of your work, and then like ten minutes later, the guy's like, hey, you there? Like, what's up? And then ten minutes oh. later, the guy was just like, oh, I see how it is. You're too big for a small price, you know. The guy went from, like, super fanboy to, at the end, like, hating him. And then my friend didn't get any of this. He was sleeping. It was, like, in the middle of the night. And he woke up to this, and he's like, what the fuck? And then, and then he wrote to the guy. He's like, hey, man, like, I was sleeping, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then, that's, that's yeah, too much. Then, yeah, and then he's like, oh, dude, my bad. Like, I was drunk. I'm sorry. You know? And he's like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't text uh, professionals drunk, dude. It doesn't, it doesn't look very good. And he's like, you, you know, it's all good, man. It's like, you know, apology accepted. But just like, just know, some people aren't as cool. Some people don't take that lightly. Um, you know, but if you were just like, hey, you know, there's this, you take a screenshot of that spot and you say, hey, you know, on the wheels of this drawing, like, I really love it. I'm a big fan of your work. I wonder, like, I'm really curious how you did that. Like, do you use different types of layers or whatever? Like, I, I just can't seem to figure it out. Like, some people will be more than happy to answer that, you know, especially if you come at them really honest and really nice. You'd be shocked. And if they don't ever answer you, then just keep asking people like you just asked me, 
That's what smarts too. Just keep asking. Okay. Just keep asking until you get answers. Um, that's kind of the example I was trying to give earlier with my programming, right? Like I just keep going until I get some goddamn answers. Until stuff starts to work. All right, I'm gonna take another question. Oh, I've got some question. Uh, I think Yellen uh, had a one, right? Interrupted her several times. Yeah. Is she still awake? Yeah, Are you still alive? Yeah, I'm here. I'm okay. really sleepy, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, did you saw that what I brought in chat? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, so my question is, what was your personal hurdle or your art thing when my you are doing? My personal hurdle. Art? Hurdle. Yeah. Um, there there wasn't any. That stands out. What? <laughs> no, there wasn't because there's all kinds of things. You know, one time there would be like very superficial reasons, and other times it would be very real reasons, like you know, no jobs available or whatever. Oh, um, I mean. And so, so uh, I think uh, I think it builds character. All the stuff that happened to me. So I don't really, I don't really uh, contribute them to be negative too too much, right? Um, really? so, Anything so, challenging to you? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, all of it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my point. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I never struggled. I'm just saying that it was, but I just never thought of it. Yeah. I never thought about like, like, okay, here, let me give you a good, a few good examples of the way I think about this. So when I was trying to get a job in the industry, character design, you know, I was doing a lot of concept art, and then my um. I was doing character concept art, which is a very niche, very specific, and very challenging career. And all my teachers would tell me, oh, you should learn 3D. Like, you should be a 3D prop artist. It's much easier to get a job, right? Mm -hmm. Very much like how Hein is approaching his stuff. Remember, I went on a whole lecture about he should really reconsider that. It's because yeah. I've been there too, right? So people would tell me, hey, you know, you should, you should stop doing that because it's really challenging. And I said, yeah, I know. What's your point? <laughs> like you know, you know that it's not it's not good advice to tell me that something yeah. is hard. Yeah. Like of course it is. I didn't ask you that it was. I didn't ask you if it was easy. I'm asking you what can I do to obtain that job? And your answer to me is that that job is hard to obtain, so I should do something else. That's not good advice. Mm -hmm. And it's because, and they're like, well, this is very challenging. It's super competitive, man. Like, there's a lot of amazing artists out there. And I was like, yeah, I get it. I want to be amongst them. Why do you assume that I can't be a part of that, right? Um, like, you, are you telling me that all these artists never sucked in their careers, never were bad at their art, and they just got, they were like, it's like the fucking Hunger Games, that they just got selected randomly to be the character artists that lead this industry? No, it's not like that at all. Like these people earn yeah. their their place. I was like, there's obviously people doing character concept art. It's a it's a clearly a career. I'm just asking, how do I do it? Instead, people were telling me it was very difficult all the time, specifically at my university. And so then, when I would talk to real character concept artists, they would tell me, you got to work on your edges. You would have to work on your forms. You got to work on your anatomy. You got to work on your perspective. You got to work on your designs. You got to work on all these different things. And then I was just like, these are really helpful tips. These are the kinds of things that I was looking to hear. People tell me why I sucked. People tell me why I was doing well. And I just kept on uh, getting more and more of this type of information to help me get better and better and better, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, never did I ever think that uh, there was a personal hurdle that I needed to overcome, you know? Uh, because I was over, like I was too busy jumping over the hurdles. <laughs> if that makes sense, <laughs> right? Like it wasn't like I never stopped to reflect on it. I just was doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, a good way of thinking about this, another one. I told you I'd give you a couple. Here's the second one: is imagine there's an egg, and then the egg hatches, and now there's a little chicken, right? So 
in that instance, you would you would think the the hatching of the egg is the true birth of life, right? Yeah. And so when people ask that the kind of question that you ask, that's kind of what they're looking for the kind of answer to that that situation that metaphor poses, which is the, when was the hatching of the egg, right? Mm -hmm. But think about it. The the chicken first had to be you know assimilated, it had to be born like it had a, the sperm with the egg and then the egg started to form into the, the the one that gets laid by the hen and then the, inside the egg is just the embryo it's just yolk right and then the yolk turns into lungs a heart feet beak wings feathers right and then eventually it hatches but then it doesn't stop, right? Then it then it grows, it gets it molts, it gets larger feathers, it grows its larger bones and larger lungs until it eventually becomes its own little chicken or uh, rooster. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of the metaphor is that there was never there was, there was not a single moment that truly defined the beginning of life, if that makes sense. It's all was gradual. Everything it was like the the heart formulating in the in the in, in the egg was just as important as the hatching of the egg. They're like on the same level field. It's all a gradual growth of a little that little chicken, yeah. And so um, that's the way you should think about it. So it's like it's not like okay, I have all these personal. How do I overcome? Or I'm sorry, what was AJ's personal problems? It's like no, I probably had a very similar amounts that you guys had like i don't think i had anything uniquely unique to like anything that was unique to me you know um i think it's the same like i had insecurity issues i was always uh, uh there's moments where i was insecure about my work there's moments where i was doubtful if i was making it in an industry there's moments where um i was reconsider my whole career path all these things things that you guys have probably already experienced on countless amounts of occasions as well mm -hmm. Uh, all I'm saying is that's distracting to focus on those things. Just start working. Just get your get some work yeah, done. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I'm totally agree with you. And what I'm actually asking about you is after hatch the egg, you got the job at the industry. <laughs> yeah. And you got the uh, task from the client. And some of them must be more challenging to you than something other things like that. Uh huh. Yeah. So what was that? Uh, that all depends, right? So sometimes it would just be the time frame. Like sometimes they would want something really quickly versus mm -hmm. like a lot of time. Um, but some of the yeah. most the most difficult, challenging stuff via clients is just being able to interpret what they actually want. Those are the, the most challenging mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, w it wasn't anything other than that. Like, it was just like communicating with mm -hmm. the client. Those were some of the most challenging stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Communicating with your client? Yeah, because sometimes they'll say they want something and then you give it to them and then they say they hate it. Yeah. So it's like really, it's really challenging, you know? That kind of stuff, because I'm not in control of their thoughts. <laughs> you know, I'm in control of my own thoughts and my own destiny and stuff. So it's much easier for me to kind of uh, make decisions, right? Uh, but it's it's hard to do that with other people's projects and ideas. Like, so I, navigating around that was is probably one of the most challenging things as a professional for me to deal with, even to this day. But uh, I've gotten better at it. And so, um, but other than that. Uh, very rarely would I get a job doing something that I, I didn't have in my portfolio. I mean, it would happen occasionally, but very rarely. Mm -hmm. You know, like we love your uh, we love your fantasy stuff. Can you draw um, popsicles? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 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 has happened. Where like uh, people saw my demons and they're like, "Your demons are really cool, dude." And I'm like, "Oh, thanks, man." So you want me to do some demon work for your fantasy game or something? What's going on? They're like, nah. Can you like draw football characters? I'm like, what? <laughs> that that was actually what happened. I had a job that did that. Yeah. And so I'm just like, oh, all right. 
And I did get job. It was, it was actually fine. I did great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'll take one last question. I just got to roll out. It's a long class. Uh, super, super quick question, real quick. Okay. Uh, what, I, I think I wrote down my homework wrong. Is it five iterations of each character five, that I submitted? Yeah, five characters, three iterations. Five, five. Okay, thank you. So you did. You would have had a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been cool, but uh, it would have been wrong. Um, yeah. So good thing you asked. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, my question, can you hear me? <laughs> I can, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, um, what to answer, uh, because uh, they often ask um, in the interviews or uh, like uh, before even sending uh, the assignment work, uh, how much I would like to get paid. Like, I never know what to answer because, I don't know, they should know. How much? Uh, no, they don't. Why? Why would they know how much to pay you? <laughs> and, okay, okay. And, and, you know, and you don't want to put them in that position to have that power. Because what if they're like, "We'll pay you ten dollars for all of this work." You're like, "All right, they know what they're talking about. Better do it." Yeah, right. You will never do it. Take that job, right? So, mm. so it it actually is. It it does make sense for the client to ask you how much you're worth. Not in like a shady way, but like in a way that they really want to know what you think you're worth, whether they can afford you or not. I had um, I had a, a friend of mine who's an art recruiter. Sorry, I mean not a, not a client like for freelance, like for ten characters, for example, but for a full time job. Yeah, the same uh, thing. Same thing. Like okay. again, yeah, like let's say you apply for a job and they're like, yeah, we'll pay you ten thousand dollars a year. Like that's not mm -hmm. very. That's not a lot. No. <laughs> yeah, so it's, like, it's the same thing. Like it's 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 very clearly your responsibility to know how much you're worth. Okay, it's not theirs. Mm. Okay, because otherwise they'll just pay you the cheapest that they can. <laughs> you know. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, so you, so you don't want that to happen. You want to have that power, is what I'm trying to say. You want to 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 tell them how much they can mm. afford. Okay. Um, so for me, for me, it sounds sometimes like they uh, they ask me the question because they want the cheapest uh, person, like you know. Yeah, that's exactly like right. Kind of yeah, like why? And, why? But my 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 question to you is why is that wrong? So imagine if you were hiring someone to work for, like for work for you, and you only had let's say a thousand dollar budget, and you have to do two illustrations, right? And someone comes to you and you really love their work. And they say it's going to cost you two thousand dollars per illustration. Mm -hmm. So are you going to be like, all right, let's do it? And then you're going to go get that extra thousand dollars somewhere and pay for them to only do one illustration? No, it's just not feasible. You can't afford that, right? And so you have to find the next option, right? And so then you go. Let's say you find someone that's just as good as they are, but they say we, I'm only charging uh, two hundred dollars per illustration. So you're telling me. That if you were that employer, you would rather hire the two thousand dollar person because they had more value, because like you feel like that's that's the right thing to do. No, you would hire the cheaper one always, right? Um, and th so don't get me wrong. I, I, I like uh, less than I expect. Uh, no, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's your responsibility to know your worth. I'm telling you, it's the client's responsibility to hire what they can afford. So it's not your responsibility to then bring yourself down to the lowest margin. You just tell them how much you're worth, and if they can't hire you, that's fine. That's fine. Just don't take the job. Don't be desperate. It hurts the industry if you do that. Okay. I'm kind of desperate now. <laughs> no, no. Seriously, think about it. Okay. Let me let me explain it to you so that way you really understand why it's a bad idea. Okay. Let's just use some simple math, something that uh, Alexa's not very good at. Or Alex is not very good at. I'm not very good at math. Okay. So let's and say it's my choice. let's say let's say that they can only afford uh, two hundred dollars and you say, Okay, that's fine, I wanna do that. And it's gonna take you sixty hours to do what they're asking you to do. Like there's a full illustration with seven characters doing crazy things, you know? It's gonna be like a, a week and a half of work. 
maybe more, right? Because this includes changes and iterations and all that stuff, right? So you're basically working for $3 an hour. Are you really that desperate? <laughs> I was working for uh, three, uh, like Polish money per hour. <laughs> but, but no, I'm asking a serious question. Do you think $3 an hour is worth your time? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because if, if, if you are looking just to make some money, I can tell you right now, you don't have to be, you can make more money flipping hamburgers. Yeah. Oh, no. You see what I'm saying? Well, like, gonna, yeah, yeah. So, so then why, why are you charging yourself way less than you could make doing something that doesn't take any real skill? to acquire. Oh, you can go right now today and apply to many different types of jobs and make twice, maybe three times as much money as you did on that project. You understand? Yeah. Do you see the point? Do you, do you, now you, do you see kind of the, the point I'm trying to make? Yeah, sure, this company will, will probably screw you over, but you, you gain nothing from it. You lose time, you make very little money, and in some instances, you can't even show the artwork that you did. Yeah, that's the problem. Right? So it's like literally the worst thing you can do. Don't be desperate is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Because it's actually bad for you. You don't get anything out of it other than a bad experience and a hard lesson. Does it make sense? Yeah. So if you, if you say that you're worth $25 an hour and they said that they only have $200 to pay you, right? So this is how you do yeah. it. You say, okay, I can take that job, but I can only do a day's worth of work. That's all you guys can afford. Do you understand me? Like you could totally yeah. work with them, but say, look, like it's not going to be e epic, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, mean, I could do it, but it's like it's not going to be it's not going to be epic. And if they're cool with that, then then do the work and get paid two hundred dollars for a day's worth of work. That's good. Even if you did it for two days, that's still more than you would have made it somewhere else. But once you get into three days, four days, now you're really cutting into now you have to start to tell them, hey, like you have to give me another two hundred dollars, right? Because yeah. it's your time. And if they ever make you feel like you should just be doing it because it's like it's an honor, um, no, fuck <laughs> that. No, so fuck come fuck that. That. They came to you, man. They're the ones that are truly desperate. You understand? Like, because mm -hmm. if it was easy to just draw, then why don't you do it? You dick face. You know, <laughs> like why? <laughs> If if this is something that's an honor, then why don't you have the honor and do it yourself? You see my point? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so don't ever do that. Don't ever, like, the companies, there are some people that will try to fucking undercut you. That's just how it is. That's never going to go away. But, yeah, yeah, I know. But a company's, like, if I only have X amount of dollars, you think from their perspective, they will only get what they can afford. So Ubisoft, let's say, like a large studio, they can absolutely be like, yeah, $25 an hour, no problem, let's do it, you know? But if you feel like, oh, man, I should have asked for more, well, see, you should have asked for more. You know what I mean? It is not their, like, why, why, would they, why would you ever want them to have the power of how much you're worth? Never. They'll ever let that happen, Okay. Okay. Like, and I can tell you guys right now, $30 an hour is reasonable for freelance. $20 an hour is reasonable for contract. I'm sorry, like uh, in-house contract work, okay? Mm -hmm. These are reasonable rates to ask. Uh, and uh, this is for all of you guys. And the more experience you have, that you can just keep adding dollars, you know, as you go on. Mm -hmm. There's a really good strategy, which is every time you get a new job, ask for $5 more, you know, until you reach mm -hmm. a cap. And then people are like, hey, what the? Like, you are not worth $10,000 an hour. I'm like, oh, well, at least I got to $9,995. <laughs> like I found the top, you know? I, I'm not worth that much, but you, just, you get my point, right? It's just you just find yeah. the, the, the top, and then you just – or any place that you feel really comfortable, you feel really confident with, you know? So when people pay you that much, they don't ever question the value of that. They're like, no, he's definitely worth that. Or she's definitely worth that, right? Does that help give you some you. insight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I always have problem with that. that. Like they often ask me, and uh, yeah, and you should you should yeah, tell them straight up like how much you think you're worth, okay? And if they can't, if you can't um, 
do the job, then you can't do the job. Like, they're not going to pay you. It's just going to be a bad experience. It's not worth your time. Okay. Uh, what about? Uh, uh... Can I ask like another quick question? Yeah, and then I'll, like I'll if they uh, they answer like really uh, because like I had that situation. I passed the test, act test, and uh, they asked like uh, the HR people. Uh, they asked like really uncomfortable questions. Like it seemed to me uh, during the interview that it was only to like make me nervous or stressed. Like for me, like there was no point of this kind of questions. Like for example. Uh, one of those questions was like, what do you do if you work with a person who's not qualified? Like, how to answer that? Uh, I mean, this kind of... That is bizarre. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Yeah, yeah, I was asked and then, like, I answered like, well, I would let them know that they are not qualified. <laughs> 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 and I did, actually. And I was fired. But, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, this I don't know. What it is. This is how it is, man. It's um, that's why you just gotta <laughs> level, you just gotta level up your artwork and get out of that that the, the playing field that you're in right now. You know, that's all you gotta yeah. do. You just gotta get out of that world where, because <laughs> nobody why, nobody yeah. does that with me nowadays, right? Like when I first started, it was definitely like what you're saying, a lot of shitty, like a shit show. I did like this, yeah, yeah, I did like but, seven but, illustrations yeah. over the span of like a year for this company for only seven hundred dollars. So don't um, don't don't get this twisted. I made those mistakes too, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's a it's a mistake, <laughs> okay? And so, yeah, yeah. and I don't I even know if I can ever show that artwork that I did. And to be honest, I don't think I want to. Anyways, it's really bad. <laughs> and so, and so, it's really important. Yeah, that that's we don't do that. Me. That's me. I, I don't even want to show uh, the work I've done with one company. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, I've it, it's been what, freaking six or seven years since I worked for Sony Santa Monica. So the, some of the artwork that I did for them is like seven years old, right? Huh. Um, or maybe even older than that, eight years old maybe. Uh, no, like about seven years old. Um, I'm super proud of all of it. I, will st I still show it to people. Like it's really good. Hmm. Like I did really good there because I was surrounded by amazing artists. I was paid what I wanted to get paid. You know, I worked on a project that I love to work on. Hmm. So the work demonstrated that, you know? Yeah, I was going to say that, but, uh, like, when I was working with that <laughs> unqualified person, like, the guy didn't know how to draw at all, like, seriously. And, yeah. like, he was correcting what I was doing, like, yeah. oh, my God. And, like, uh, like, when you look at that work, you can feel, like, the artist <laughs> first craft, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going into the work. <laughs> yeah, well, let me just be clear, man. Like, don't ever take jobs that aren't going to pay you, okay? I'll pay okay. you what you deserve. And and if you think it's their responsibility, right right out of the gate, no, you're wrong. It's yours, okay? It's your responsibility okay. to know how much you're worth and then ask for that every time. And as you acquire okay. more jobs and you become more qualified, then obviously you can ask for more money. Yeah, sounds okay. pretty simple. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, I got to go now. Thank you. It's like way past class time, but it was a good class. <laughs> you guys have a good weekend, all right? I'll talk to you guys yeah, real soon, and you guys have a great, great time and Thank hang you. out with each other. Use the Discord, and uh, yeah, you guys is head up. Peace out. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.